Yeah, right. Go ahead. You're on. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So welcome, everyone. We are so excited that you're here. Um, you guys are all here because you want something more from your business. You want to pop. So thank you for giving us some of your time. We know that life is busy, but we're all in this together. So let's go ahead and get started. Just to let you know who we are, I am Holly Stevens, and I am from the Dallas, Texas area, a little town called Rockwall, and I am an advanced director, and I will be celebrating whoop, whoop, 25 years next month. Very good, and hi, everybody. I'm Julie Lillicrop, and I'm an advanced director from Westminster, Maryland, and I have been changing lives with Pampered Chef for 14 and a half years. Awesome. So, yeah, almost 15. I'm really excited about that. So I want to take a quick minute and thank my partner in crime for creating an amazing slideshow for y'all tonight. So thank you, Holly, for going to the effort to do that. We really um, appreciate that. So we want to start by asking you guys a few questions. Okay, a few things to ponder. Do you have a personal brand? Do you even know what that is? What are some of your favorite branded items? Nike, Under Armour, Michael Kors, maybe Coach. When I say those names, do you automatically see their clothing or their logo? I bet you do, right? Because our minds automatically go to that image. Why? Because they have a plan. They have a strong brand presence. They have a tagline and they have a mission. So what is your mission statement for your business? Do you have a specific purpose? Do you believe in your mission and purpose? And why is this so important? It's important because you are the CEO of your own business. How the public sees you is entirely up to you. So before we get started on our topic tonight, we want you to take a minute and ponder these next couple of questions. Think about them now, and then we're gonna share them again at the end. We're also gonna post these questions on your group so that you can answer them in the comments, okay? Question number one, do you feel your friends will recommend you as a Pampered Chef consultant? That's a big one. Number two, what do you think people think about you? Number three, what is your social media presence? Example, fun, opinionated, negative, positive, silly. Number four, if your family and friends could only use one word to describe you, what would it be? And number five, describe yourself using one word. Please don't feel like you need to jot all those down. We're going to post them on the page for you, but we want you to think about them throughout this whole training. All right, Holly, up to you now. Okay, well, I know my word is awesome, but then I think I'm awesome. Um, okay, so we are all about prospecting tonight. So how do you find new contacts, make new friends, and build business away from your shows? The first step is to please and pretty please be mindful of what you post on social media. We know that social media has become the way of reaching everybody about every topic, about everything, but you don't have to do that. And please don't throw up all over everybody um, about Pampered Chef or about your children or about um, the woes in your life. Just be mindful of what you post. And please stay away from the big three, politics, religion, and I can't remember the third one, but I think it's about like dissing your husband or something or wife. I'm not really sure, but I can't remember that third one. But just be mindful because you don't know who you are um, disrespecting. I mean, just as a really quick example, my family and my friends and many people in my community know that I'm very politically um, inclined. They know how I feel. Um, and they still get along with me, but uh, my customers that don't know me don't need to know that, and they still love me. So that part I keep separate from my pamper chip business. So what we want you to do is to share your mission and purpose at every sh at every show, and at the beginning of your live and recorded events. And it's very important that you have a mission and you have a purpose. And I know my good buddy, Julie, has an awesome mission that she shares. Give it up, Julie. 
All right, so I say this before every live post I do and in all of my shows, and it goes simply like this. Hi, I'm Julie, and I am on a serious mission to help you save money on your grocery bill and bring healthy eating habits back into your home. Boom, that was easy. And do you notice she did not mention Pampered Chef? She mentioned what she wants to accomplish, what she wants to be remembered by. She mentioned that she wants to save people money and um, you know what, honest to goodness, I can't remember what the rest of it was because I'm cheap, that's what I remembered. And other people are gonna remember exactly what they need to from her statement. So your personal brand is what people are gonna remember and how they are going to know how you are gonna make their life better. So remember, I wanna make everybody's life better by dot, 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 and you're gonna find your mission, your purpose, and your brand. Okay, so now we're gonna give you some thought-provoking questions. Do you believe in yourself and our business? And are you confident enough to take that action? Are you confident enough to approach a potential new friend while you're out and about? And that's really, really important. I mean, you're confident enough to tell people about a new restaurant you went to or a new movie you saw, but are you confident enough about your Pampered Chef business? Julie, are you confident? I am confident. So, but you know what? When I started my Pampered Chef business, I looked like that little puppy dog on the screen. I was absolutely terrified to talk to anybody, even at my shows. So, you know, that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. And that's the purpose of this group is to really stretch you outside your comfort, do uh, comfort zone. So we're going to talk a little bit about some important steps that you need to take in order to prospect outside your show. The very first one and the most important one is belief. Okay. Um, that teeny tiny little word belief packs such a gigantic punch. When you believe so much in the quality of our products, the amazing rewards program, and the ability to help someone. What happens is your actions then reflect your belief. Therefore, you'll have results. And just so Julie has up on the screen there, that's called our belief triangle, okay? It is so essential that you believe in your ability to be a great consultant, okay? What you believe will determine your action. Your action then creates results. Your results reinforce your belief. That goes in the positive and it also goes in the negative. If you're not 100% sure you believe in yourself, you may not take action. If you don't take action, your results, the results are going to be eh, and that's going to reinforce the fact that you didn't believe in the first place. But we're a half full kind of company and a half full kind of team. So we're going to go, we believe, we take action, we're getting results. That reinforces our belief. Okay. Na, na, na. It's really important to have that belief. It's such a huge part of our foundation. Um, one thing I want you guys to remember is that you are a consultant, not a cashier. Okay? Um, you don't take people's money and walk away. You offer them a service. And this is really important to believe. Okay? So what does all this have to do with prospecting? Absolutely everything. If you don't believe, what is the likelihood that you're going to start a conversation with someone? Probably very little, right? So in order to effectively prospect and grow, we must learn how to have a conversation. That is such a basic, important skill. And here's a couple quick little tips for you to learn how to have a conversation, whether it's online or in person, okay? And we're going to circle back to this in some other trainings, just so you guys know. An easy way to start a conversation with someone, give them a compliment, but tie it to a question. If you just walk up to someone and tell them, oh, I really like what you're wearing today, and then walk away, you have no conversation. That's a statement, and there's different there, okay? So you want to tie it to a question to continue that conversation. Oh, my goodness, I love your sweater. Do you mind if I have it? Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, where did you get it? Add some humor. It's okay. Your hair looks so amazing. I really wish that I could have that same hairstyle. Who do you use as your hairstylist? That's very personal. Can I tell you? One of my very dear friends is my stylist. Who does your hair is very personal. And when you compliment someone on their hair, it goes a long way. So you want to tie it back to a question that opens the door for conversation. 
we're in a, you know, a food industry. So talk about their lunch. Oh my goodness, your lunch looks so good. Did you make that? Or by chance, do you have a personal chef? <laughs> Tie it back to a question, okay? Now there's another way you can start a conversation. We call it a general conversation. These are usually you when you know somebody fairly well, but you want to strike up a conversation with them. It can, oh, and please, here's the biggest tip I can give you. Always have your happy face on. If you're going to start a conversation with me, I don't want to see you. I want to see a happy face and a smile. You know what? A smile changes everything. And when you walk out with someone with a smile, they're more apt to have a conversation with you. So simple questions like, how are you? Holly, how are you? Right. Meant with love and passion. And then go into, you know, you know, what do you think of this weather or are there any good books that you've read lately? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. What have you been up to? Open-ended questions. Now I know this is important to Holly, but you know, what's your favorite sport? Whoop, 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 whoop. Not everybody is a sports fan, but that's okay. You know, ask silly questions. Like if you could only have one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? That's a great one to do online to start a conversation going just in general and on a virtual party. Okay. Um, what's your favorite or dream vacation spot? All right. The rule of thumb here is conversation leads to connection, which will open the door to opportunity. So I really want you to focus on that conversation connection opportunity. If we go out there and just throw opportunity at people, then that is about us. That's about what we need. It is not about how you can help or solve a problem for somebody. Okay, I'm gonna give you some example. If you just randomly post about needing more bookings, it makes me twitch when I see it, okay? I'm not, I'm not lying to you. Um, does that help you or is that helping them? That's all about you, okay? Um, or just starting a conversation strictly with Pamper Chef. Again, that's about you, not about helping them. Here's one, I'm gonna throw it out there. It might ruffle some feathers, but the brownie pan challenge. <laughs> Robin's face says it all right there. <laughs> Is this about helping somebody? How many people need that brownie pan? Okay, I'm sorry, it's about sales. And that comes back to you. You're not starting a conversation, making a connection or offering an opportunity. You're asking them to buy something. So let me give you a possible solution. Okay, ask engaging questions to start a conversation which will lead to that connection. Example, oh my gosh, I am so excited. I have saved so much money on my grocery bill by making homemade granola bars for my kids. Easy, fast, healthy. How much do y'all spend a week on prepackaged foods? Okay, does that, can you see that door opening for conversation? And you all know what product I'm talking about, but we're not gonna throw it out there until we have an open door for conversation. The second most important step with the conversation is being a good listener. God gave us two ears and one mouth. There's a reason. There are two steps to listening. One is called a level one listener. And this is where most people get hung up. It's more about us. The conversation is more about us than it is about them. Listening is a real skill, and I'm going to tell you it's really hard to do, and most people think they're very good at it, but very few of us really are. <laughs> level two listening is where we're going to end up, and we're going to jump there in just a second. So level one listening is really um, about you. It is not about the exchange that you're having with somebody else. It's typically not very powerful for the other person. Um, it may be powerful for you, but not so much for them. So here's an example, and I'm going to use my friend Holly. So let's say I ran into Holly at the grocery store, and I said, oh, Holly, how you doing? Oh, my goodness, what have you been up to? And she said, you know what? My kids are so busy. I have three kids that go on in a million directions. And I immediately jump in. I don't even let her finish the conversation. Holly, I've got three kids, too. One's in college. One's in high school. This one's over here. Oh, my gosh, I was at field hockey day. I'm running all over the place. Girl, and I'm going on and on and on. Now, in my mind, I feel like I'm connecting to Holly because we have a common denominator, and that's our children. The truth of the matter is, is I'm listening to myself talk more than I am her. Then the conversation becomes about me. And this is where most people get hung up. Okay, that's called a level one listener. Where we want you to go is to level two. Oh, <laughs> Simon, how many of you guys are familiar with Simon and Garfunkel? We're the only old ones on here. Oh, there's a few hands going up. Okay, um, you're going to be hearing that song for the rest of the night. I know I am already. Um, so level two listening. Okay. 
I know that song's going through everybody's head, but get back to listening now. <laughs> um, level two listening. This is a skill. This is a real skill that we're going to challenge you to really focus on, okay? Level two listening means you make that initial conversation. One of my favorite songs. Oh, Danielle, you're sweet. Um, this is where you make that initial connection with someone, whether it's kids or some type of bridge that you can relate to them. However, the conversation then goes 100% back to the other person. You actually have eye contact. This is very stressful for young people. <laughs> you actually have eye contact with that person. 100% of what they're saying is going right into your brain and you're processing it. It is meticulous awareness of what they're saying, how they're saying it, their facial features and their body language. Level two listening is very present. You are very active and present in that moment. It requires faith, humility, letting go of the need to just go ah, 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 and jump in there. You've got to back up and let that go. Most importantly, it takes practice. It is not easy, but when you fully listen to someone, I promise you, they will always give you the clue you need to open that door for further connection to offer an opportunity. Okay, so I'll give you a very quick example. We're going to go back to Holly and then we're going to move on. So I run into Holly at the grocery store and we're talking and she says, oh my goodness, my kids are going in a million directions. I go, girl, I get it. Three kids all over the place. So tell me a little bit about what it's like in your house. What does dinner time look like for you? <laughs> Stop talking. Two ears to one mouth. It is all about Holly. I've made the connection. Now let her tell me what I can do as a service to help her. Okay, it's a tough skill and we're gonna challenge you on that one because it's hard, okay? So we've talked about a mission, a purpose, a brand. We've talked about belief. We've talked about the art of conversation and listening. So what in the world are you gonna do with all these gifts? So Holly, I'm gonna ask you, you go into the real world, right? A little bit. Is it a little scary? <gasps> no. Okay, it might be for some. Okay, so when you go out and about, uh, who goes to the grocery store? Uh, yep, everybody. And um, I got to tell you, as a person who lives in the South, we have been known to talk to everybody everywhere. And people in the North and the Northeast, uh, nay, I say above the Mason-Dixon line, do not talk to people. However, I have lived in Chicago and New York City, and it's true. People don't talk to people, but when I started talking to people, they did. So yes, people talk to people. Be that person who starts to talk. So when you were in the grocery store and you notice somebody, let's say their kids are crying, look at them and tell them it bothers them more than it bothers you because we have all been there. Better yet, compliment them on their well-behaved child or compliment their child and say, you are helping mommy so much, or daddy, you are such a great kid. Or look in their cart and say, oh my gosh, that looks yummy. I've never tried that. Anything, just to start a conversation. If you're passing the same person over and over, you can say, you look familiar to me and I don't mean because I just passed you in aisle four. You can say, um, was it church? Was it here or there? Did I go to school with you? But you can always say, you know, I do Pampered Chef. Maybe you were at one of my parties. And they'll say no, and then you can continue that conversation. Always have your season's best cookbook out and open or a recipe card. And so you can look for items from there, whether or not you're buying ingredients for that item, okay? Better yet, give it to the mom with the crying kid and say, here's something fun you may want to try. Your family may like it. Shop at the meat counter. Don't buy the prepackaged meat. Why? Because people who are standing at the meat counter have to wait for the butcher to give them the meat. So you can say, what are you going to do with that piece of meat? I need some new ideas. Or are you doing the same old thing with that piece of meat? Would you like some new ideas? And make sure when you check out that you are checking out twice. One for your personal, one for your Pampered Chef re uh, recipes. So you've got your personal account and your Pampered Chef account and make a comment. It's great that I can write off these groceries on my business. 
and give that uh, uh, checker a mini catalog. You know what the best conversation starter is when you don't open your mouth and you wear Pampered Chef logo wear. And people will say, are you a Pampered Chef consultant? And under your, you know, in your head, you're going, no, I just like to wear their clothing. And you go, I am. Are you looking for a consultant? When you go to a restaurant, how often do you talk to the server? I do it all the time. In fact, my kids are like, mom, can we go out to dinner without you talking to the server about Pampered Chef? No, no, we can't. Tell them, compliment them. Tell them you have thoroughly enjoyed them helping you. Tell them you are looking for people like them to join your team. Ask them if they like to cook. It'll surprise you how many people will love the fact that you did that. Give them a mini catalog. And if you haven't had a chance to do that, put it in the payment folder with a handwritten note. Always keep post-it notes in your, um, in your purse or in your pocket. Um, and if you can't do that, leave it on in that little ringy thing, okay? You know, that holds all the specials. Okay, here's one of the most important things. Host your own show. Not for the people you know. Host it for the people you do not know. Okay, how do you do this? How do you invite people you don't know? Set a date. That's the hardest thing to do. Put a date down and set it for a week from today, okay? Because everyone knows what they're doing. Create an invitation, but don't put on the invitation. I'm your local Pampered Chef person. Just make an invitation that says, I'm having a Pampered Chef party and I wanna to get to know my neighbors. Walk around to every house in your neighborhood, not your street, not your block, every house in your neighborhood. You go to the door, you knock on it, nobody answers, you write down the address, you go to the next door. When somebody answers the door, if it's a kid, you ask to talk to the adult in the house. Introduce yourself, tell them you, that you're inviting them to an invitation. And um, I'm losing my spot here. Okay, um, depending on what they say, you are going to um, get their number and their email so that you can send them a, rem a reminder. And this is very, very, very important. Okay, if nobody is home, you're gonna go again. And if nobody is home, you're gonna go a third time. The third time if nobody is home, you are going to then leave a note with the invitation asking them to come. Then you're going to follow up before the show because if you don't, this has all been done in vain. You're gonna encourage them to bring friends. Make it a mystery host. Everybody likes to get free stuff, so hey, might as well make it profitable. And then after the show, call everybody. People who attended, thank them for coming. People who did not attend, tell them they were missed. And if they want anything, want to host, you know the drill, do the close. Okay, vendor events, you know, I could go on for 17 hours about this. I just had one yesterday, but we don't have a whole lot of time, so I'm gonna do it really, really quick, okay? Um, where you can find them, community Facebook groups, the Nextdoor app, um, which just go to nextdoor.com, see if your community has a Nextdoor app. While you're at vendor events, they're the, great, the best place to find other ones because you're gonna talk to other people around you. Ask your Chamber of Commerce. Go to showlister.com. Go to fairsandfestivals.net. Specifically, those two places, when you click on some of these craft fairs, they're gonna say, oh, if you want more information about this, you have to join and pay so much money to get the information. No, you don't. You just Google whatever that event is because these people um, advertise it. And so you'll get all of that information. Okay, so how do you work this event to your advantage? You stand in front of your tables, never behind. You never ever sit down. Less is more on the table. Demo a product if possible. Take minimum cash and carry. Ask guided questions like we've already told you. Have quality conversations. Make friends with other vendors. And your goal is to make contacts for shows and recruiting. Here's the first question I ask at all my vendor events. When's the last time you've seen Pampered Chef? And you'll be shocked. I had people yesterday at my event say 10, 15 years. And I'm like, girl, you got some shopping to do. There's my booth from yesterday. You'll see I had a poster printed up of our quick uh, cooker 
and behind it, you can't see it, but there's the quick cooker. And this was right before we tore down before a terrible thunderstorm. You'll see minimal stuff. I brought new stuff. That's my consultant in the background. And uh, it was highly successful until the rain shower. So now, now how would you answer your questions? Do you feel your friends would recommend you as a Pamper Chef consultant? Do you think people, what do you think people think about you? What is your social media presence? If your family and friends could use only one word to describe you, what would it be? And describing yourself using only word, one word, what would that be? Okay, so now we're gonna recap. You need to know your mission and your brand need to be strong in your belief system, practice your art of conversation, and especially your art of listening, and going out and finding events, and practicing your out and about prospecting. All right, so you're taking action. We're gonna challenge you guys to start 10 conversations uh, out and about using the mini catalog as a resource, and we wanna post, we wanna hear your results for all of that, so we'll be posting a link for you to do that. Um, Holly, you want to add the next one since this is your go-to? Yeah, um, if you've got old catalogs, and generally we all do, um, do not throw them away. Uh, we're going to show you an, an example of a label to put on them, and we will also post it to the group. Lead them everywhere, and we will post uh, places to lead them, and um, we want you to practice your guided questions. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for giving us your time tonight for, for committing to the success of your business. We're going to leave you with a few quotes um, that might make you think, and then we're out of here. So we're going to read those really quick. Holly, you want to go first? Uh, failure is a decision. You can't not fail when you try, only if you don't go for it. Every no you've ever heard is now in the past. Do not hang on to it. You are the captain of your own destiny. Success is no accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing or learning to do. Your positive action combined with positive thinking results in success. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. What do you guys think about that? Do one thing every day that scares you. That's where your growth is. You guys, thank you so much, and thank you for committing to this program. We are here to help you every step of the way. Night. Thanks, everybody.